Many people use balloons to teach the concepts of bonding and molecular shapes. So what I'm showing is not necessarily new, but perhaps it will be new for some of the viewers. Uh, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the shapes of covalent molecular molecules using the valence shell electron pair repulsion or VSEPR theory. In the VSEPR theory, we're going to use the balloon to represent a shared pair of electrons. So the balloon is representing electrons. The nuclei, the bonding centers of the atoms, are going to be the knots, the ends of the balloons. They're really not visible. Because in the VSEPR theory, we know that those electron pairs, they're repelling. So it's the electrons that we want to focus on, in this case, not the, uh, uh, the nuclei. I do this as both a demo and as a lab for my students. So what I'm demoing for you here, uh, I would also have students working with. So every student in class would have four small balloons, maybe like a seven inch balloon, and they would be building and modeling these as I'm working through the process as well. Then on the board, what the students would be doing is that we would have them collect the data for the different shapes, we would talk about the bond angles, and we would talk about those names. That way they have a visual clue to put with the material that they're collecting. The process that I have, I've got trash bags that I'm using so that I can organize my balloons. Uh, it helps to keep them from floating around the room. It makes an easy way to keep them organized. And I have them color coordinated so that I know which ones that I'm reaching for and going for. And that's a tip that you may find useful as well. The next thing that I'm going to show you is how to temporarily attach the balloons such that you can reuse the balloons from one period to another. And to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to take and stretch the neck of the balloon out. And as I stretch the neck of one balloon out, I'm just simply going to take and wrap the neck of that balloon around the first one and wrap it several times around so that it's nice and tight. Then I'll repeat the process with the other side, stretching it out. Then I'll wrap that neck around that balloon several times around. And what happens is then when you release the balloons, when they, com when they contract back in, it forms a temporary knot and that temporary knot allows those balloons to stay together for the moment, but will then allow us to take these apart store them in a trash bag until the next class comes in, and then we can reuse the same set of balloons over and over and over throughout the day. So that's the tying technique, but when you do it in real life and you get good at it, it looks a little bit like this. You just put them together and you just kind of twist and tie simultaneously, and you get this nice little, little knot that forms in there, and so your balloons are all twisted together. Now. What we have at this point is a model of what we would call a molecule of AB2, where atom A is in the center, atom B would be here at the end of the balloon, atom B would be at the other end of the balloon, and these would be the two sets of electron clouds shared between the atoms. So A in the middle, B, B, and I have two sets of electron clouds. These electron clouds are located 180 degrees apart from each other because we know that light charges repel. So this balloon, or set of electron clouds, and this set of electron clouds are the furthest apart that they can get geometrically with this space. And so we talk about the linear molecule, a bond angle of 180 degrees there. Then we will add a third balloon into that process. And again, just by taking and twisting and tying that into the center in the same fashion that we did previously, wrapping it around several times, we end up with this massive knots in the center. And when you let those go, again, they hold together. So now we have a molecule that we have A in the center, B, 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 and out here to the outside. And the shape that we result from three pairs of electron clouds shared around one central atom ends up taking a bond angle. And I'll ask the students for what is this angle. And you would be surprised, perhaps, at how many students say 60 degrees. For some reason, there are a lot of them in geometry classes, and they're thinking triangles or something, and they're thinking 60 degrees. So we go back, this is a circle. This is a circle. So if I have one third of the circle, oh yeah, yeah, okay, I got it now. That's 120 degrees. So it's amazing how many misconceptions that you would have with that, and that's something you probably should check for. So again, A in the center, B, 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 three sets of electrons cloud shared around, and that gives us a shape that we would call trigonal planar bond angles, as we've seen, is 120 degrees. Now, before I go to the next step, I tell the students, okay, we're gonna add a fourth balloon to this process. Predict in your mind, and think about a picture and a shape that would result when we put the fourth balloon into here. And after they've had a moment to think about that, then I have them take their fourth balloon, 
Again, twisting that neck into the center so that we get this kind of temporary bond process. And I ask them, is this what you predicted? And in most cases, the students will say yes. We're predicting a plus sign. And certainly, this is a possible shape. This is the shape that I tell the students that might exist, and it's called a square planar shape. And the bond angles in here would be 90 degrees for some of them, so we have A in the middle, four Bs around the outside, and so the bond angles are 90 and 180 degrees. But I ask them, is that the best shape, is that the most stable? And at that point, what I have students to do is we have molecular collisions in the air. And I tell the students to take their molecules that they have and find a partner nearby, and they should throw the molecules in the air and collide them as molecules would normally do. So I'll toss this in the air and show you kind of what happens with that. And when it goes up and it collides, then we get this process. And no matter how many times I tip this balloon around now, this shape remains. So I've gone from the plus shape to this shape, and whatever this shape is. But this is a stable shape. And so at that point, we can talk about the other shape may exist, but it does so only temporarily, that this is the more stable molecular shape that results, so that we've got Bs, all four Bs, and A is buried into the center again, that the angle that we see here is an angle that is greater than 90, but less than 180 degrees. So it's some kind of a, of a variation between those two shapes that we saw with the, uh, with the plus shape before. This is called tetrahedral shape. And this tetrahedral shape is the most common stable state for this, and the bond angles would be 109 and a half degrees. Now, at this point, I'm going to pop one of these balloons just to get it out of my way. And we're going to talk about what happens if we go on from AB4 to AB5. If you can put four things in a molecule, can you put five? Well, let's just see. And we're going to co color coordinate this by putting a different color in here. I think the color coordination helps the students to be able to visualize what we're going to look at here. So we're back to the tetrahedral four things. And now we're going in for AB5. The fifth one is we twist those balloon necks into the center. And we end up with something that looks a little bit like this. This is the shape. Again, A is in the center. And now we have five different atoms, all alike so that we have an AB5 molecule here. But with this AB5 molecule, we have two different kinds of geometries taking place. We have the molecules, which are the red ones, and as you can see here, are located around what we would call the equator of the molecule, and they're called equatorial positions. And then we have the yellow balloons, and here's where the color coordinating helps. The yellow ones are called the axial positions. And so we have combinations of 90s, 180s, and 120 degree angles in this molecule. And that becomes important when you begin to go into your advanced classes or your APIB classes, because there's where you can begin to talk a little bit about the, some of the geometries and the shapes that are taking place there. So the students want to know, okay, we can have two things, three things, four things, five things. Can you have six things around a central atom? So yes, and we're going to pop another balloon now. Get rid of it. So we're back to our tetrahedral shape at this point. And we're going to go to a slightly different color, just because color is fun. We've got back to five balloons. Now we're going to six. And if I can get all of this oriented properly. If I can get all of it oriented properly. Maybe I can get all of it oriented properly. <laughs> there, success. Now we have six things covalently bonded around one central atom. Again, A, the central atom buried deep in the center. B, 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 and B. And with this shape, what we have is all spots are filled. We have 90 degree angles every direction in here. And this is, the most, uh, this is the most atoms that you will typically find around one central atom because of the geometries. And in order to make this happen, the central atom A would have to be a relatively large atom so that we would then have relatively small atoms bonded around that. Uh, the analogy I make is it would be difficult for six lions to drink out of one small bowl of milk. 
So if the central atom in the, in the, in the middle here is a small atom, it, this would be a different, difficult geometry. On the other hand, if I have a wash tub full of milk, six kittens could drink easily from that. So if the central atom is very large, then the corresponding atoms around the outside make that happen very nicely. And this shape is called octahedral. Uh, I failed to mention on the previous shape that we had was called trigonal bipyramid for the AB5. And this shape then would be called octahedral. And the reason it's called octahedral, you think octa, eight, well, you only have six things bonded. But if you look at it, these three balloons form one face. These three balloons form another face. So I have one, two, three, four faces on top. And I have those same four faces below, giving me eight faces, and therefore the octahedral name for that. The color coordination, I think, helps students to visualize the process. And again, the fact that if you can do this as a lab activity rather than just as a demonstration, the fact that they have this hands-on experience and they've got those colors will help them to be able to understand that. This is an activity that I do with first-year students. Then I go back with my second-year and advanced students. And it's a concept that you can repeat. I think it's valuable at times to repeat demonstrations and lab activities, that there is additional learning that can take place. And so this is one of those that I believe does that. So I hope you'll try bonding with balloons. Thank you.